This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This chapter deals with some aspects of financial mathematics, and we begin by looking at interest rates. And the first type of interest which we can uh, consider is known as simple interest. So simple interest is very simple to, to calculate. Uh, let's say the interest rate was 10% and you deposit uh, let's say 600 and this is a per annum rate then after one year you would have uh, 600 this is called the principal plus you would have 10% uh, of that you simply have 660 So that was a year one, then in year two, the way it would, would work is it would still go back and look at the uh, original amount, the principal that was invested, uh, and you get another 600 uh, uh, plus 10% uh, times, uh, well, it be 660 plus 10% times 600, uh, it's going to be uh, 720 and so on. And one more year. 600, that's the principal which is on deposit. We had 720 in the account, but the interest is calculated back on the original in there, so it'll be 780. So in simple interest, you don't add interest to interest, you just add interest to the original uh, deposit there, and every year you're going to be getting the same amount of interest added on. Here, every year we're getting at 10% of that original deposit added on at £60, $60 a year is going to be added on. Yeah. So very straightforward. But it's actually a, uh, probably a relatively rare form of interest to to, to have uh, because really if at the end of year one there's 660 in the bank account uh, uh, why are they not paying you interest on 660? Why are they going back and, and, and only giving you 10% on the 600? So that brings us on to the second uh, type of interest, which is compound interest. And compound interest, it really does give you interest on interest. So if we put uh, 600 on deposit, and again, we'll be dealing with 10% the rate of interest here, then in year one, uh, you'll be getting 10% uh, of that added on. Uh, and then you're going to keep that there for a year, and the bank would give you 10% of that, so that's going to be 66 for the second year, so 6 to uh, 726, and then for year 3, it's going to give you 72.6 for year 3, so it's going to be 6, 8, 9, 7. So here we're ending up after three years with 798.6. In the previous example, uh, after three years, we only ended up with 720 because you weren't getting this kind of acceleration. You weren't getting interest on interest. Uh, so this compound interest is much more generous to people if you're earning interest. Uh, but of course, it will, will cost you much more if this was an overdraft going up. The bank added on 60 for your first year's interest on your overdraft, your overdraft was at 660. Now, whereas in simple interest, it's really quite easy to work out what you're going to end with at the end, up with at the end of five years. It's five years at 10% times the original deposit of 600. Uh, it's, it's going to be very tedious to have to go through this kind of tabular approach uh, uh, to, to deal with compound interest. Uh, and basically, uh, what we need is a little kind of a, a formula here that the final amount we're going to be ending up with is going to be the initial amount times 1 plus, uh, let's say, R for the interest rate raised to power N, uh, where N is the number of years. And R here is the interest rate uh, as a decimal. So
So in this example, our initial amount was 600. Uh, the interest rate as a decimal, 1 plus 0 0.1. And you'd raise that. We've kept it there for three years, the power 3. Okay. Now, for a relatively small number of years, you can do it very quickly on your, your calculator in a kind of long sort of a way. So 600 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 is coming into, as before, 798.6. However, that's a, it can be a little bit tedious. You're having to do it for 10 years. You're sitting there tapping your calculator for 10 years. Uh, and there's lots, lots of kind of chances that you're going to be going wrong uh, within that. Uh, and so for this exam, you really need a calculator uh, which has got a function on it, which allows you to, to raise to uh, a power so you can work out uh, interest on long-term deposits uh, relatively easily. So let's say that what we're going to be doing is we're going to deposit... Uh, let's say uh, $500 for maybe eight years at maybe an interest rate of 4.5%. Uh, so the, the final amount will be equal to the initial amount, which is 500, times 1 plus the interest rate as a decimal, 0 0.045 raised to the power of 8. And if you have a, a, a scientific calculator, you will see there should be a little button there. On, on mine, it's a, a X with a little blob on it there to, to the top right. That looks a bit like that on my calculator. And that allows you to raise something to a power. So we can put in uh, 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 here uh, 1.045 and then we press that button and then we put in 8. We can close the brackets if we like uh, and that's going to be, uh, that is going to be 500 times 1.422. So it's going to be about 711. So you really do need a calculator with this, these scientific functions that allow you to raise the powers or alternatively take roots. So that's compound interest. What else is there an interest that we need to be uh, a little bit wary of? Uh, and this is going to be looking at, kind of connected together, something called annual percentage rates, effective rate and nominal rates. Okay. Let's say uh, that what we have is some sort of interest rate where they're going to pay you 2% per quarter. So not waiting to the end of the year to add 2%, they're going to add 2% after every three months. Now you might be able to see uh, that if you look at 2% per quarter, this might kind of imply 8%. Uh, but in fact, it, it's not really, because uh, after one quarter, you've got the original deposit plus 2%, then you're adding 2% to that. Okay, uh, So this is not really equivalent to 8% per annum. Let's see what this would amount to if we did it quarter by quarter by quarter, and then we'll work out, uh, if you like, maybe a, a kind of faster way of doing it, or an alternative way of, of doing this. So let's say, again, it's uh, $500.00. Well, at, at the end of one quarter, end of three months, uh, you'd have that amount. You'd have added on 2%, basically. And that's going to stay in your account. And in the next month, it's going to be next three months, next quarter, it's going to be adding that and so on third quarter like that so it's really equal to 500 it's like the compound interest calculation really 
raised to the power of 4. So we take 1.02 raised to the power of 4. We're going to be getting here 1.0824, call it. So the effective interest rate in here is equivalent to 8.24%. Not just equivalent to 8%. Uh, this is in fact very compound interest of being applied per quarter and is that little bit more valuable. So uh, really this is the effective rate. It would be an easier calculation for you to be told uh, Put money on deposit, uh, we're going to add 2% to that every quarter, and this is equivalent to, or the effective rate, of adding 8.24% on per annum. It's also known as the, the annual percentage rate. Uh, and again, it works both ways, uh, because uh, it, it used to be that finance companies, and indeed banks, uh, would try to obscure what the real cost of interest would, would be, they would say, here's your overdraft, because it, it works both ways. Here's your overdraft of 500. We're going to charge you 2% per annum. And they might say, well, that's like an 8% rate. But in fact, uh, you're being charged interest on your interest. And the annual percentage rate, the true rate of interest, is actually the 8.24%. So that's uh, the difference between annual percentage rate uh, effective rates and what's sometimes called a nominal rate. A nominal rate really means it's it's not real. If you say somebody is the nominal head of an organization, they're not really the head of the organization. They're just they they got a figurehead, a kind of headline figure, if you like, in here. Uh, and what we uh, need to be uh, thinking about is if you were given a nominal rate, uh, how would you uh, essentially manage to convert that uh, to be the effective rate? Okay. So uh, let's say we we're given a nominal rate. Say of 10%. And we'll say uh, that uh, we're going to be adding interest on each month. So in other words, 12 times per hour. Now the way you can get to uh, from the nominal rate to the annual percentage rate is to say, well, what they're trying to say in this 10% per annum here uh, and it's 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 it, you know being slightly misleading in many ways here is it trying to say you're being uh, charged at the ten percent divided by twelve. So this is a per annum rate, okay? But they're going to be charging you interest or giving you interest every month. So what they're trying uh, to, to make you believe is they're simply saying, well, there's ten percent is divided over 12 months. Uh, but of course, if you're adding interest to interest here, then we would have to raise that to a power in here. Yes, but they're adding interest to interest to interest to interest for kind of 12 months in here. And what we'll be ending up with in, in here is 1 uh, plus 0 0.1 divided by 12 the raised to the power 12, it's going to be 1 point, whoops, 1 1.1047 or 10.47% because the interest is being added on every month. Uh, we can do it with this this here, this 8% this if you like. They could have given you a a nominal rate of 8%, say we're going to add the interest every quarter. So you would have said, right, it's a nominal 8%. It's being applied every quarter, 
and we have to compound that up like that. So it's 1.02 raised to the power 4. And of course, it's coming out to the 1.830824 again, uh, which which uh, 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 we we had in 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 here. I think. Let me just check that. So it's 1.02 raised to the power of four. Yep, I've written it down wrong. Uh, 1.0. 824, so the 8.24%. So uh, there, there are other examples in your notes, but this is this is the basis of the calculation to allow you to move between uh, 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 either quarterly rates uh, or, or monthly rates or indeed daily rates to see what the effective rate is over the year, uh, and also to see through this this slightly misleading concept of a nominal rate. The headline rate of 8% looks quite good, but actually if you're applying, if what they mean by it is we're applying a quarter of that every quarter and we're compounding it, it's actually coming up to be 8.24%. Uh,